Good day, grade 11. Welcome to the next lesson in geometrical optics. And um, we started this lesson, I mean, started on geometrical optics um, in the last lesson, and we were talking about reflection. We spoke about reflection, we, we were talking about refraction. And what we were moving on to was to explain refraction to you. So what we noticed was that if you had a surface, so let's pretend that this bit here was air and this here was water, then when the light hit the surface, it would be refracted. Okay, and we now need to explain how it gets reflect, refracted. Okay, so what happens is, sorry, let me just draw that. Okay, so that's more or less how it gets reflect, refracted. I mean, we don't worry about that angle yet, but that's how it gets refracted. So what you need to think about is, and the analogy we use, is that you're driving along. Okay, so the light ray, I mean, this car would be traveling along in the same uh, direction as the light ray. So that there would be a car. Okay, maybe I should draw this a little bit bigger. Hang on, just erase, erase all ink. Okay, so you've got your surface, and here is your light ray, and that is the normal. Okay, right? And the normal is always perpendicular to the surface, right? So the light ray is coming in, and you can think of this car as driving in the same direction as the light ray. So there's the top of this green car. Okay. As the car drives along, it will get to this point over here where the front tire will hit, in this case, the more optically dense medium. So in this case, this is air, and this would be, for example, glass or water, okay? Or in this case, it's a smooth road versus a rough shoulder or sand, okay? So what happens is that if this was a car, then this wheel, this right wheel here, right front, oh, this right front wheel here would dig into the sand, okay, right? So that's what happens. So it digs into the sand and then what happens? The other wheels are traveling faster, so it causes the car to come around and go this way. So it ends up bending towards the normal, okay? So it's exactly the same thing that's happening here, except of course this is, you must remember that this ray is showing just the direction of the wave. What actually is happening and what you'll learn about when you learn about Huygens' principle with regards water waves and that, is that these are wave fronts. And what is happening is the wave front is hitting, the light wave is uh, wave front is hitting this boundary, and these water waves, uh, light waves here, are being slowed down by the more optically dense medium. So what happens is that the, the faster the front of the wave is going to go around the corner. So it's exactly the same thing as if you would got a wheel that is caught, yes, your front tire getting caught in the soft sand. What happens is this wheel, this wheel, and this wheel can travel faster than this one. So this, and then therefore they move around it. Okay, so they start traveling in that direction. Then they move a little bit further and you'll see that these two wheels get stuck. So they're going to keep turning until they're all stuck and then they move slower through the softer sand. Okay, and that's exactly what's happening here. When we talk about more optically dense media, we talk about something that means that the light travels slower through it because it is more difficult to get through that that medium okay so this is how refraction works and we'll talk more about exactly how the light i mean how much this bends in a little bit further on so the refractive index of the material is a ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to its speed in the material okay so in other words if we measure the speed of the light in air, or we call it a vacuum, versus the speed of light in water or glass or whatever, then what happens is we can have a measure of how much this is going to refract, how much this is going to bend. Okay, so there's a formula for it, which is N is equal to C over V. It's a very easy formula. N is your refractive index, and it is just a ratio of the speed of light versus the speed of the light on a given medium. And the speed of light in a vacuum is given as three times by 10 to the eight meters per second. 
so if you look over here you've got a table this is a beautiful diamond and you can see it's all shiny and sparkly okay and there's a reason for this and we'll talk about it in a second if you look at here, vacuum has a refractive index of one, helium and air are very close to one. So we just we just pretend that air has got a refractive index of one. Water has a refractive index of 1.31. Let's go all the way down to diamond. Diamond has a refractive index of 2.419. What that means is the light is going to come in, okay, and it hits the surface here. And then it gets refracted and it goes along over here. And let's say that at this point here, instead of it coming out, what happens is it might get internally reflected. And we'll talk about that. And then what happens is the light bounces around here a whole bunch of times and then comes out. So you end up with the light being refracted as well as refracted, reflected. And that is why diamonds are so sparkly. Okay, so you can see that there are a whole bunch of different refractive indexes. And of course, the bigger the number, the slower light is traveling through it, whereas the, high, the smaller the number, the closer the, it is to the normal speed of light, which is three times by 10 to the eight meters per second. So now it says, calculate the refractive index of an unknown speed where the speed of light through the substance is 1.974 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then use the table to identify the substance. Okay, so we know that N is equal to C over V. We know that C equals 3 times by 10 to the 8 meters per second. We know that V is given as 1,974 times by 10 to the 8. So let's work out what n is. n is going to be 3 times by 10 to the 8 divided by 1,974 times by 10 to the 8. So we need a calculator. So let's move it over and clear it. And we've got 3 exponent 8 divided by 1.974 exponent 8 equals and then press the estimate, 1.52. So N equals 1,52. And now we go and look and we see, well, 1,52 is crown glass. Rock salt is 1.516, which could be considered to be 1.52 if you're rounding. But since we've got exactly 1.52, I would say that you could say it's crown glass. So there you go. Now we've used a table to identify the substance. Right, now, let's talk a little bit more about the refracting measure and optical density because in order to understand the refractive index, you really need to understand where it comes from and how these things happen, okay? So, optical density is the measure of the refracting power of the medium, okay? The higher the optical density, the more the light will be refracted or slow down as it moves through the medium. Okay, so in other words, we've said before and I've, I've explained it that optical density is a measure of how slowly the light travels through it. Okay, so the slower the light, the greater the optical density. You can think of it as the light is finds it difficult to get through because it's got a greater optical density, okay? But another way of saying it is, we know that the greater optical density, the more the light is going to be refracted, okay? So therefore we can say that another way of saying it is that optical density is a measure of the refracting power of the medium. Okay, the higher the optical density, the more the light is going to be refracted or bent or slowed down as it goes through the medium. Now, there are a couple of things you need to know. These are definitions that you have to, have to, have to learn. Okay, so you have to learn these, please. Um, remember what I said to you before, in science, you, they don't expect you to know a lot of definitions. Okay, I think they do expect you to know a lot of definitions, but according to the people setting the exams and the people who set the curriculum, they figure that compared to life sciences, for example, there's a very little theory that you actually have to learn. A lot of it is, is practical and applied. So what they say is that they expect you to know the theory that it is, that there is word perfect. 
In other words, you need to be able to say, if they say, give the definition of normal, you would say the normal to a surface is the line which is perpendicular to the plane of the surface. You have to say it exactly like that. You can't say the normal of a surface is a line perpendicular. Um, that's it. Okay, you have to say the normal to a surface is a line which is perpendicular to the plane of the surface. And you can't use 90 degrees either. You have to use the words perpendicular. The angle of incidence is an angle defined between the normal uh, to the surface and the incident light ray. So this year is the angle of incidence. And that is pretty important because a lot of people get confused and think the angle of incidence is this one here which is the angle between the incident ray and the boundary, but it's not. The angle of incidence, theta i, is the angle, okay, between the normal and the incident ray. The angle of refraction, okay, in this case theta r, is going to be the angle between the normal and the refracted ray. Okay, so please be careful of that and please don't get confused between, yeah, this R is not reflected, it's refracted. If you get confused, rather write it all out refracted. Okay, so if the incident light hits a boundary of different optical density at an angle, the light ray will change direction as it is refracted. Because refractant, remember, means bending, bending, bending. Okay, if the light moves from a more optically dense medium to a less optically dense medium, it will be refracted away. Don't wait, my pen's gone. There we go. Refracted away from the normal as it speeds up. Okay, so if you want to, you can think of it almost as the car going backwards. If this car was going this way, so let's say that the, the movement of the car is now downwards towards the bottom of the page. Do you see that what would happen is that this wheel here would hit the pavement first. So this wheel is going to be traveling faster than these three wheels, okay? So it's going to pull the car around this way. Okay, let me change color. It's going to pull the car, because this wheel here is going to hit the pavement first, so it's going to pull the car around, and this one would be the second wheel that would hit the pavement first, a second wheel to hit the pavement. So it's going to pull the car around this way. And do you see that if you look at that, if you make that the normal, okay, if we're coming this way, if we're coming this way, do you see that there is the light and there is the light? So it's refracted away from the normal. Whereas if you were going the red way, I mean, you're going the reverse the way we originally had it. If we were going this way, then do you agree that this would be coming along like this and then it'd be hit refracted away from the normal? So if you've got towards the normal, so if you're moving from a more optically dense medium to a less optically dense medium, you're going to end up going faster and that means you're going to go away from the normal as it speeds up. So here's an example, here we go, the light ray is coming from the bottom of the water, from the water through to the air, and you'll see the refracted ray angle, angle of refraction is much bigger than angle of theta. So theta 2 in this case is much bigger than theta 1. Okay, whereas if you're going from a less optically dense medium to a more optically dense medium, the ray is going to refract it towards the normal as it slows down. So as it slows down, it goes towards the normal. Okay, so yeah, theta 2 is going to be smaller than theta 1. And if you don't understand it, that's fine, but then you must learn it. Okay, you must learn it. Right, so now let's talk about Snell's law. Snell was a Mr. Snell. He was an eminent scientist, and he came up with a way of working out how we could possibly measure. We, he did a whole bunch of measurements and came up with a way of how we could predict what the angle of refraction was or the incidence if we had the refractive index of the two and vice versa, okay? So this is what he did, okay? He said that N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 sine theta 2. Now the weird thing grade 11 is that in every other formula, um, theorem, I mean, sorry, let's write it again, every other definition, 
every other definition. For example, Newton's second law of motions is F equals MA, right? So if you wrote, if I said to you please define Newton's second law of motion and you wrote F equals MA, you would get it wrong. Okay, if I said to you what is Newton's law of universal gravitation and you wrote F is equal to G and 1 M2 over R squared, you'd get it wrong. You'd have to say it in words. Snell's law, the definition is N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 sine theta 2, just like this. And then obviously you have to tell them that N1 is the refractive index of material 1, theta 1 is the angle of incidence, N2 is the refractive index of material 2, and sine the and theta 2 is the angle of refraction. But that's the definition. There are no, there's nothing in the words, no words, okay? This is the definition of Snell's law. So this is the only time that you know of so far that you will come across the fact that you can just write out the formula. Okay, so again, we've spoken about this, right? So now, light moving from a medium of high refractive index to one of low refractive index. So again, we've spoken about this, but I just want to point it out to you. So we've got N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 sine theta 2, okay? So 1 is going to be incident, 1 equals incident, okay? And two is the refracted ray, refracted. Okay, so then do you agree I could say N1 over N2 is equal to sine theta 2 over sine theta 1? So that's pretty cool. So then if I knew that this is going from water to air, okay, then do you agree that air has got a refractive index of 1? And if I knew what theta 2 was and theta 1 was, because I could measure it, I could actually do an experiment and measure it, then I could calc find out the refractive index of water, which is very cool. Okay, so in other words, I could do an experiment where I look at how light is refracted, I measure the angle, the incident angle and the refracted angle, angle. And because I know that N2 in this case is 1 because it's close as anything to vacuum, we could work out what this was, for example, water or glass or perspex or whatever. Okay. And similarly with this, we could do exactly the same thing. Okay. So you will notice here that the original path, okay, goes from, so I'm just reiterating again that if it's going from water to air, it is going to speed up. And if it's speeding up, it's going to be refracted away from the normal. It's going to, so the faster it's going, the further it is from the normal, okay? If it is slowing down, then what's going to happen? It's going to go towards the normal, okay? Right, so now let's do a bunch of exam questions. I think the best way to really understand this section is to do a bunch of questions. So it says, and this is a multiple guess. No, it's not a multiple guess, guys. Please don't ever, unless you're desperate and you've got nothing else to lose because you haven't done any of it before, and this is the last gasp attempt, um, don't guess. Use an educated guess if you have to use an educated guess. Okay, it says light wave travels obliquely from air obliquely. What does obliquely mean? It means not straight into it. What you have to understand is that if light hits a glass block or whatever the boundary line at exactly 90 degrees, then there is no refraction. So it is going to go straight through and straight through. End of story, no refraction. In order to see the refraction, the light ray has to hit the glass or the boundary at an angle, okay? So it has to hit it at an angle and obliquely means at an angle. So what's gonna happen is that the, oh, sorry, is the light has got to come in at an angle and that's what obliquely means so it's going from air to glass okay so it's going from a high it's got a going from a low optical density to a high optical density speed changes what speed is it going to be it's going to be from fast to slow do you agree with that it's going to go from fast to slow it says, which one of the following, which of the combinations below correctly describe the changes in the frequency of the wave and the refractive index of the block compared to that of the air? Okay. 
Well, do you agree the diffractive index is going to get bigger? It's going from air to glass, so it definitely increases, okay? So therefore, we can tick off the increases. So it's either going to be that the frequency remains the same or the frequency decreases. Okay, so the thing is, what do we know? We know that why would the frequency change? Frequency is to do with the source of the wave. And the source of the wave is not speeding up or slowing down. It doesn't know that the wave is going through air or glass or perspex or whatever. So the frequency is going to remain the same. Okay, the frequency remains the same. Right, now let's talk about this. Okay, this is a very nice question. We're going to go through it. And this is the type of question that they like asking, okay? So they say, learners investigate how the path of the light ray incident on a glass boundary changes as it enters the glass medium. The results are shown on the table. So you've got angle I, angle R, and then they've got sine I, sine R. Okay. It says, for this investigation, write down the dependent variable, the independent variable, and the constant or control variable. Then it says, draw an appropriate graph of the data in the table and use it to obtain the refractive index of the glass material. And then finally, it says, use the graph paper attached to your paper to answer again. Okay, use the result to calculate the speed of light through the glass material. Okay, so first of all, we know that N1, N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 sine theta 2. Therefore, We've got N1 over N2 is equal to sine theta 2 over sine theta 1. And we are moving, it says the learners investigate how the path of light ray incident on an air glass boundary. So we're going from air to glass as it enters the glass. So N1 is air and this is glass. Okay, and they've given us our sine theta and our sine r. So what is the dependent variable? Do you agree that the dependent variable is going to be the refracted angle? The refracted angle is dependent on um, the incident angle, okay? So the dependent variable is going to be angle r, independent variable, that's the one we change, not the one we measure, is going to be angle angle I. And what is the control variable? Do you agree the control variable would be the boundary type? Okay, it would be the boundary type. In other words, we're not going to halfway through the experiment change it to air and water or to glass and water or whatever, okay? We are talking just specifically about air and glass. Okay, now they say draw an appropriate graph of the data in the table and use it to obtain the refractive index of the glass material. Okay, so do you agree that sine... Okay, so this is going to be, we've got N1 over N2 is equal to sine theta 2 over sine theta 1. But we want N2, do you agree? We want the glass refractive index. So N2 over N1 is equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. So sine of theta 1 is actually your incident and sine of theta 2 is your refracted. Okay, and this N1 is air, which is effectively a vacuum, so that's just one. So this here is the gradient of sine theta i over sine theta 2 would give me the, the actual refractive index of the glass. So this is, has to be y and this has to be x. So therefore we know that this is going to be sine of theta 1 and this is going to be sine of theta 2. And now what we need to do is we need to plot this. Okay, so sine of theta 1 is 0.25, okay. <sighs> okay, right, so it's 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, 2, 8, 3, uh, 
three two three four three six three eight okay so it does work so this is going to be 0 0.0 0 0.26 effectively so it's to two to four to six so it's somewhere in that line and this one's 0 0.174 so it's 0 0.17 so it's uh, 0 0.2468 10 12 14 16 18 so it's going to be somewhere along here is point 0.1 that's point 0.1 now it says uh, 0 0.423 0 0.42 okay and 0 0.276 so that's going to be 2 2 to 4 to 6 to 8 so it's about over there Okay, next is 0 0.707, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.262, 44, 46, I mean, sorry, 6264666687727476. 6, 6, 6, 6, and 0 0.2, 0 0.469, so it's 4246 about over there okay then 0.819 so it's 0.82 and 0.545 so that's two four six eight five five two four six eight five five two five four over there and then 0.866, huh. so 0.866 is going to be 828486, somewhere there, and 0 0.574, huh. so that's, what do we say, it's 246, 246855256 and then 0 0.94 8 8 2 exactly and 0 0.69 2 3 so you can see it more or less forms a straight line and if you guys have so that's my graph i've drawn so it says draw appropriate graph the material done that and it says in use the top 10 the refractive index okay so what you guys need to do is you need to draw a best fit line but obviously you don't have to you can basically need plot through so you go through as many points as possible so unfortunately i don't have a ruler so i'm going to do the best i can so my line looks like that, more or less, okay? You guys have to use a ruler and you need to make sure that you go through as many points as possible. So let me try that again once more. So it looks like it goes more or less like that. Okay, please use a ruler and a pencil so that you can erase things if you make a mistake. So now what they're saying is they want you to use it to obtain the refractive, refractive index of the glass material. So what are we going to use? We need the gradient. We need the gradient. So it doesn't really matter exactly. You don't have to be perfect with this, obviously, because it doesn't fit a perfect line. You need to draw a best fit, which we've done or well, what I've tried to do without the use of a ruler. The best way for you guys to do it would actually be to put a ruler down and then to see which line would actually take you through as many points as possible and then draw that line. That would be your best fit line. Okay, so if I want to find the refractive index, we said that it would be the same as y of x. So I need to find a change in y of a change in x. So this is the gradient. So n2 is going to effectively y2 over y1. Delta y2 divided by delta y1. So 
what I'm going to do is because I have randomly drawn my line, um, therefore my gradient is not going to be very good. I'm going to choose some points. So I'm going to just randomly choose that point there and I don't know, let's choose the second point there. And I'm going to find the gradient of using those two points. So I'm going to go M is equal to Y2. We're going to call this point 1 and this point 2, okay? So M is going to be 0.574 minus, let me just check something. Yeah, I'm right. Um, And a second, y is sine theta one. Okay, so let me just fix this. Um, eraser, y is sine theta one. So therefore I have to go, sorry, and that is just wrong as well. Why didn't you stop me? <laughs> okay, right, this is gonna be delta y over delta x. So this is going to be naught point Yeah, I'm just checking that I got it right. Naught point um, y is going to be, this is naught point eight six six minus naught comma forty three, all divided by naught comma five seven four minus naught comma two seven six. Okay, and then we need a calculator. So let's start a calculator. Um <laughs> So the gradient is going to be 0.866 minus 0.423 over 0.574 minus 0.276. And then we go equals and we do SD and that's 1.49. So this 1,49 is the refractive index of this, the glass. N2, N1, well, N2, this is N2, is the refractive index of the glass. Okay, so now we've got the refractive index of the glass, and now I'll say to you, can you please work out the speed of light in the glass, okay? And we can because we know that N, the refractive index, is equal to C over V. And we've got C. C is 3 times by 10 to the 8. We've got N, we just worked it out, it's 1 comma 4, 9. So we can work out the speed of light in the glass, which is V is equal to C over N, which is 3 times by 10 to the 8, all divided by um, N, which is 1 comma 4, 9. So now I'm going to get out my calculator again. And I'm going to say, right, we've got 3 exponent 8 divided by 1.49 equals, and that's 2.01 times by 10 to the 8. So that equals 2,01 times by 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now grade 10, grade 10, you need to, grade 11, sorry. <gasps> Sorry, sorry. You need to make sure <laughs> that um, you always, always check your answer to see if it actually makes sense. And this year is that we worked out the velocity of light in the glass. And we know it should be slower, okay, because glass is more optically dense. So therefore, we know that this but yeah, it should be slower than three times by 10 to eight. It should be smaller and it is. So we've done a good job. Okay, now here's another typical exam question using our geometric optics. It says in the diagram below, not drawn to scale, light ray PO, so this is a light ray PO, da 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 da, is traveling from flint glass with a um, refractive index of 1,66 towards the boundary with the crown glass, which has a boundary of, I mean, a refractive index of 1,52. It says, write down Snell's law in words. I don't care what they say. It is N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 
sine theta two. Now it says, um, okay, now this asks you about critical angles. Okay, so I haven't taught you about critical angle yet. So let's skip this question. We'll come back to it and let's do this question because this question does not have a question about critical angle. We will come back to the other question after I've taught you critical angles, okay? It says a ray of light strikes a glass A interface. And the refractive index of glass is 1,44. So n is equal to 1,44. And we know that we assume a to be n equal to 1. The ray then travels from the glass box, glass block into the air. It says calculate the angle of refraction at which the light ray merges from the glass block. And it says take the refractive index of a as 1. Okay, so we know that n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. Okay, so this here, remember, is n1. So this is going to be, remember, we're solving, what are we solving for now? We're finding the angle of refraction. So what we need to do is we need to divide both of these sides by n2. Okay, that cancels with that. And then I'm going to rearrange. So I go sine of theta 2 is equal to n1 sine theta 1 over n2. That's a 2. So now n1 is the refractive index of um, refractive index of the glass, which is 1 comma 4 4. Sine theta 1 is the refractive index, sorry, is the angle of the incident angle, which is 30, so it's going to be multiplied by sine of 30, all over N2, which is the refractive index of A, which is 1. So therefore, sine of theta 2 is going to be this. So degree theta 2 is going to be second function sine of 1.44 sine theta. So all we have to do is put this in the calculator. So let's go get our calculator out. And we go shift sign 1.44 multiplied by sine 30 close bracket close bracket equals and you get 1.26 times by 10 to the negative and I made a mistake didn't I because that's a sign it needs to be a shift sign I get it let's try again okay so we're gonna go shift sign there we go of 1.44 multiplied by sine 30 close bracket close bracket equals much better so that is 4.61 times by 10 and if you don't like it that way you can go shift mode and we can go 7 and 2 and it equals shift mode 7 and 3 equals really SD 4.6 I should have changed it okay so basically it is going to be and I can't be 46.1 shift mode 8 2 there we go 46.1 so therefore, theta to oh, its angle is 46, comma, 0, 5. Let me just check that. It is 46.05 degrees, 46.05 degrees. And the reason I checked it was because, remember in science, you always run off to two decimal places. And I wanted to look at the third value to make sure it was less than 5. Otherwise, we'd have to round this 5 up. But that's 46.054. So therefore, we know that this is going to be kept at 5, so it's 46.05. So the angle of refraction is 46.05. Done. Now it says, give a reason why the answer to question 8.1 differs from the angle of incident to the glass interface. Well, because the light travels faster in air than it does in the glass block, block so therefore the light is refracted. That's all you have to do. Now it says, how is the speed of the light ray affected as it moves from the glass block into the air? It's a silly question because we've just answered it. We're going to write down only increases, decreases, there's no effect. The speed of the light ray is going to speed up, so it's going to increase. The correct answer is 8.3. 
Right. Okay. So what we're going to do is the next time I see you guys, uh, or you guys see me or hear me, whatever, will be on Tuesday next week. So then we will start on critical angles and total internal reflection, and then we'll do a whole bunch of questions on critical angles and total internal reflection. Have a great day. Thank you.